now that Captain Rogers and Iron Man are both gone, who do you think's gonna lead the Avengers? I could lead them. Welcome back, everyone. This is going to be my new Eternals video all about the Black Knight, Kit Harington's character, who's going to be a big deal going forward in Marvel Phase 4 in the future of the MCU. So we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We're doing a new giveaway for Disney Plus memberships because the Marvel Loki episodes are starting. I'll be doing videos for all those as well. All you have to do to enter is just be a subscriber and let me know which other movies you want to see Kit Harington's Black Knight character cross over into besides Avengers 5. Kill one Stark, two more rise up in his place. Because per Kevin Feige, when they cast Kit Harington, it was for way more. The idea was there would be way more than just this one-off appearance in the Eternals movie. So this is the video of him talking about that. It's her Kit Harington added, yes. right? Yes, he's a really amazing actor. And this part came up uh, in the Eternals film that we're doing. We were so happy when he agreed to join. And it is a part that could perhaps grow into something else in the future. So when he says something more, obviously he's talking about future Avengers movies because if you're not a big comic book reader, this version of the Black Knight that Kit Harington is playing, he's sort of like the main version. There have been many versions in the comics, but he's just the biggest version. He debuted during an Avengers comic book and he was a big member of the Avengers across many different iterations of the team over the years. But as you can see, he obviously has a very different type of origin story. He's a pure fantasy character that they've tried to weave in with the more traditional Marvel characters like Iron Man, Thor, Captain America. One of the big reasons why they have that Avengers Endgame tag scene at the end of that, what do you think is going to happen? Who's going to lead the Avengers now that Captain Rogers and Iron Man are gone? Notice they say gone and not dead, even though we're pretty sure that Iron Man died because they burned a body and they scattered his ashes across the lake next to his house. So they just want to let you know through this teaser and just sort of explain who these weird characters are because they're very different types of characters in the MCU that go way back to the origin of the MCU, the origin of the universe, but also show you that they will be crossing over with the traditional Avengers characters in the next couple of Avengers movies. Here's a really important quote from the Black Knight himself, though. This is Kit Harington's version of the character in the comics. Yes, by heaven and by the armored ancestor who bestowed the black blade upon me, that's the ebony blade. I'll explain that in a second because it's a stormbreaker level weapon. I shall follow them, talking about the Avengers, in some way, somehow, so swears the Black Knight. And then obviously down here, just the tag scene teasing his next story says, Next, Endgame. We just had Avengers Endgame and they're referencing the events of Avengers Endgame during the Eternals trailer right after Kit Harington's character shows up. So traditional MCU style, everything is connected. But I'll explain the origins of the character, how his ebony blade weapon works, how his armor works, and how he sort of fits in with these other characters during the movie and what Kit Harington's arc is going to be during the film. Because there will be a couple minor changes to his comic book backstory. They're already changing some of the things about the Eternals backstory that I explained in my last big Eternals trailer video, so I'll link that at the end of this. But the original version of the Black Knight was called Sir Percy. He debuted in a miniseries in the 1950s. He was created by Stan Lee, like a lot of classic Marvel characters. But it was actually during the era when Marvel was still called Atlas Comics. So there were a couple different names that Marvel went by before they became Marvel. They started as Timely Comics. Stanley started working there in the 1930s. Then in the 1950s, Timely Comics just rebranded as Atlas Comics. That's the era where the original Black Knight was created in this miniseries. Then during 1961, that's when they rebranded as Marvel Comics. But Stanley originated the character in just a straight up Black Knight miniseries, established a lot of the lore for the character that they then passed on and incorporated with future versions of the character when they passed the title down. Obviously, unfortunately, Stanley has passed away, so they can't have a Stanley cameo during the Eternals movie, and the movie was filmed after he passed away. But I'm sure they'll find some cool way of including some Stanley Easter eggs when some of these characters pop up for the first time. They kind of did a version of that during the Venom 2 trailer because there was a Stanley cameo during the first Venom movie. They have the Venom symbiote rearranging the comic books with Stanley's face on the cover as he's walking out of the bodega. So just look for something on that level when we get to the Eternals movie. But the original version of the character just debuted in this really small miniseries. It was pretty straight up fantasy. There wasn't anything special tying it to the other Marvel characters at the time. It was set during the 6th century during the King Arthur Chronicles. And this version of the character, this Black Knight, serves King Arthur as his greatest warrior. The main villain of that story was Mordred because we're talking about the King Arthur mythology. His weapon that he wields is the Ebony Blade, which was forged by Merlin from a meteor rock. It was kind of like Sir Arthur Dane's ancestral sword in Song of Ice and Fire Game of Thrones because we're talking about Kit Harington, we're talking about Rob Stark, Richard Madden, both being in the movie. Nice big Game of Thrones reunion. 
What a coincidence that the last time those two characters, Rob Stark and Jon Snow, met each other, he said, next time I see you, you'll be dressed all in black. And so he was. If you never watched the rest of Game of Thrones, that's because Rob Stark and Jon Snow never actually do meet each other. Rob Stark winds up being assassinated at the Red Wedding before Jon Snow can see him again. You also have to remember in the MCU, there's a lot of other extraterrestrial materials that they use on planet Earth, the biggest being vibranium. Vibranium comes from a giant meteorite that crashed to Earth. But that original Sir Percy version of the character was killed by Mordred during the fall of Camelot at the end of that miniseries, but then Merlin casts a spell that will bring back his spirit if Mordred also finds a way to come back from death. So much later in the timeline, after the Kit Harrington Dane Whitman version of the character takes up the title of the Black Knight, the ghost of that original Sir Percy character shows up every once in a while to give him counsel. The Ebony Blade is the main vessel for their family's curse that's laid on the Black Knight's descendants. The explainer behind the curses is that original Sir Percy version of the Black Knight spilled so much blood with the blade that caused it to pick up the curse. The side effects of the curse are that the more blood you spill with it, the more your body will begin to turn to stone. Eventually, the Dane Whitman Black Knight does succumb to the curse and turns to stone for a little while in the comics, but then they free him of that. Doctor Strange is a big crossover character because Dane Whitman is a very fantasy, magical-based character. Doctor Strange is one of the biggest magical characters in the MCU, so of course, they'll probably have some crossover with those characters in the future. But at various points, Doctor Strange has tried to free him of the curse, but the curse always winds up coming back. It's sort of the way they balance the character because the blade itself has so many Stormbreaker level powers. He'd be way too OP if they didn't have some debuffs to lay on it. Some of those Stormbreaker level powers that the Ebony Blade has is that it can basically cut through almost anything except for adamantium, vibranium, and other equally powerful weapons like it probably couldn't cut through Stormbreaker. It can cut down magical barriers, it can deflect energy, it can absorb all forms of energy. As long as some part of his body is touching the blade, he cannot be killed, unless you're talking about the one above all or the one below all, like the most powerful beings in the MCU. For the most part, he's immortal when he's wielding the blade. Some of the newer comics explain that his mystical armor actually comes from the blade itself. The same way in the first Thor movie, you see Thor's armor sort of activate when he wields Mjolnir, he becomes worthy again. It's kind of the same situation with the Ebony Blade, so I'm assuming that they'll do it a similar way during the MCU movies when we actually see him show up in his full armor. Like in this scene when they're inside the Eternal Spaceship and Makari is reading from all the books, you even see the PSVR unit that's underneath there, all the other artifacts they've accumulated over human history from all these different cultures and different eras of the world history. The big suit of armor that's right next to her is meant to foreshadow Black Knight Kit Harrington, even though that itself is not his Black Knight armor. The blade gives him the power of flight and it can absorb souls to make itself stronger and gives him a healing factor, but that kind of goes hand in hand with making him immortal. Like he takes damage, but it doesn't kill him. So the blade is so powerful, that's why they have the curse to explain how they sort of balance him out, otherwise he'd be the most powerful character in the MCU. That's sort of how they explain the Infinity Gauntlet. It gives you ultimate power, but it also is enough to almost kill Thanos just to try and use it. Iron Man dies trying to use it because the power is too great for him to withstand. There are some other cooler, weirder powers that it has, like supposedly the blade can't be used against its owner, and the blade itself is sort of passed down to Dane Whitman. So it's not completely like the enchantment that's on Mjolnir, like only the worthy can wield it, but it's kind of like that. But just like Mjolnir in Stormbreaker, he can summon the blade from anywhere. He has a mystical talisman and he says Avalon, and it basically brings all of his gear to him. But also he can use it to teleport the same way that Thor opens the Bifrost with Stormbreaker. But what happened in the comics is that Stanley introduces the second version of the Black Knight character in the 1960s after the first one gets killed off, and it was during an Ant-Man, Giant-Man, Wasp storyline. The second version of the character, though, is actually Dane Whitman's uncle, and he's actually the villainous Black Knight. They just call him Black Knight 2. He winds up joining Baron Zemo's Masters of Evil. We just saw Baron Zemo and Falcon and Winter Soldier. This sort of setting him up for a Thunderbolts arc, so maybe someday we'll see a version of Masters of Evil, but I'm not really expecting it anytime soon. He winds up dying trying to kill Iron Man and the rest of the Avengers, and as he lay dying, he repents and tells Dane Whitman, his nephew, all these secrets of their family, and basically bestows upon him their family's castle. So when Dane Whitman is going to explore this family castle that he's just inherited, he finds a secret passageway that leads him to the Ebony Blade. Then eventually he joins the Avengers on a version of their roster. 
It really wasn't until later in like the 1980s that he developed a romance with the Cersei character of the Eternals. It got pretty spicy around the same time his character was also in a bit of a love triangle with Crystal of the Inhumans. I know everybody wonders what they're going to do with the Inhumans because just like the Eternals, they're a really weird Jack Kirby group that kind of obscure in Marvel comics. It'll be much simpler for the MCU version of all of this. I think as long as she doesn't go mad and he doesn't wind up having to kill her, we'll be fine. Like, oh no, it's happening again. It's happening again. But the whole idea is that Kit Harrington's Black Knight and you have Gemma Chan Cersei will eventually join a future version of the Avengers. Obviously Richard Madden here thinks that he's going to lead the next version of the Avengers in Avengers 5, but all the other Eternals kind of laugh him out like, ha, yeah, right. But they're teasing this love triangle between Kit Harrington's character Gemma Chan and Richard Madden in the movie. Clearly in the footage you can see Dane Whitman knows nothing of the Eternals. But just as the movie is meant to tell you the origin of the MCU in a cosmic sense, the origin of the Eternals, the origin of the Celestials, kind of an origin of the Infinity Stones as well, even though they already gave us that explainer during the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie and then again during Avengers Infinity War, the movie will also be a big origin story for the Black Knight of the MCU. The idea with his character, just based on the way they've explained him so far, is that the movie is supposed to set him up as a scientist or an archaeologist type of character, Indiana Jones within the MCU, who discovers some of the secrets of the Eternal spaceship here that they kept cloaked and hidden on Earth for thousands of years. Cersei's character is the one who encounters him because she's so in love with the idea of humanity. She loves humans so much. Like you see her in all this different trailer footage, helping them learn how to farm, helping them develop towns and cities. So amongst the Eternals, she's the most connected to humanity. So she's sort of the one that encounters him first. She's the one that eventually winds up explaining who they really are, all their secrets, their history, the real history of the world in the MCU to him. But for the most part, I believe during the movie, he's just supposed to be the Dane Whitman character trying to help her and the rest of the Eternals stop the Deviants and stop the Celestial Host from destroying the Earth. And then I think the idea is that towards the end of the film or at the end of the movie, he'll finally receive the Ebony Blade itself. And that's meant to be the teaser for him becoming full comic book Black Knight the next time he appears in a movie. There were rumors about Kit Harington while they were filming the Eternals movie doing full motion capture. And at the time, people assumed that that meant that they would be doing his Black Knight armor as full motion capture, the same way they do the Iron Man armor in all the Marvel movies, the Avengers movies. Robert Downey Jr. just kind of walks around with a bunch of dots on him. Then later, special effects wizards come along and add the armor in post-production. But they could be doing motion capture for his character for a number of different reasons. He'll probably be in some of the bigger action scenes and battles. But for the most part, it sounds like him being full-blown Black Knight won't happen until either the sequel, like Eternals 2, whatever that winds up being, or Avengers 5, or whichever big MCU movie he appears in next. Like I said, the other big character that he shares a lot in common with and connection is Doctor Strange because he comes from this very magical place. His powers, his abilities, the curse that's on the Ebony Blade. But a lot of that story, they tend to speed run during big Avengers movies. So we'll see. I don't know if there are any plans to include his character in any kind of Marvel Disney Plus series. But I'm sure if the Eternals franchise actually spins up, if the movie does well, they do sequels, eventually they might do a Disney Plus series that spins out of some of their characters. But everybody, let me know in the comments, what do you think about Kit Harington joining the MCU? And if you have any big questions about his character, the Black Knight, how he sort of fits in with the other Avengers characters, just let me know in the comments and I'll cover it when I do more Eternals videos. We will be getting more trailers real soon. And like I said, next big thing in a couple weeks, we'll be getting those Loki episodes. All my videos for that will post on Wednesdays just because that's when new episodes drop. So be sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss any of those. Congratulations, Shadow Prince. You're the giveaway winner from my last big Marvel video. Please email me on the about page of my channel so I can get your contact details. Everyone click here for my full Eternals trailer video and Easter eggs connections to the other Marvel movies. And click here for my brand new Loki trailer video with all that episode one footage. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys tonight.